For the first time in nearly two months, for the first time in seven weeks, seven games, the New Orleans Saints have won a game and have snapped their seven game losing streak by defeating their rivals, the Atlanta Falcons and interim head coach Darren Rizzi's debut for the New Orleans Saints. The odds were stacked against the Saints. They fired their head coach earlier this week. They had a lot of distractions. They traded Marshawn Lattimore. They were missing their top two receivers, their top cornerbacks, and they had Derek Carr at quarterback. And the Saints were still able to pull off a nail-biting win versus their rivals, the Falcons. We're going to break down this 20-7 victory the Saints just had over the Atlanta Falcons. Because while getting a high draft pick is important for the team long term, getting a win over your rivals will always be good and I will never be upset at that. That's enough yapping, let's dive into it. So apparently, uh, Darren Rizzi said his day started by clogging his toilet, the head coach's bathroom toilet, and he didn't really feel like a head coach of an NFL team this morning after that moment. There's really no relevance to this information to the actual game. I just wanted you all to know this. But who knows, maybe Darren Rizzi clogging the toilet was part of some Darren Rizzi black magic voodoo that led to three missed kicks from Young Wei Ku, who earlier this season beat the Saints on a 57 yard kick. While Darren Rizzi's day may have started off crappy, pun intended, the Saints offensively and defensively did get off to a nice start. The defense did a nice job stopping the Falcons on their opening drive and forcing them to punt. Then the Saints on their first play scored a touchdown but was called back due to a penalty but it did result in a 30 something yard gain because the penalty was downfield. Taysom Hill had a really nice play. There's downfield blocking and when you really look back at it, it doesn't really look like it could be holding like it could have. You could let that one slide but you can also see maybe why they did call it holding. But you could definitely tell that Darren Rizzi was not happy with that call. He was in the ref's face. He was pissed off and he wanted an explanation because he did not like that call. And this is the, probably the first time in a long time that we've seen a Saints head coach pissed off about the refs making a bad call. Something Dennis Allen did not do that Darren Rizzi already does better than him. Later on in the drive, the Saints would end up in a 4th and 2 situation and instead of playing scared, they did go for it. We all like that decision for them to go for it. They ran the play that typically works, Taysom Hill running up the middle and they didn't get it, but that's okay. Rather go for it and not get it than take simple 3 points and do whatever. And after the Saints missed out on that first down, the defense held the Falcons yet again and they punted the ball. The defense got off to a nice start holding the Falcons 2 straight punts. And they needed to be good in this game for them to have any success. I mean, they're already down Kool-Aid McKinstry. They traded Lattimore and they've been out pulsing the Debo for quite some time now. So they had Alante Taylor at outside corner. They had Shamar Jean Charles and then Ugo Omadi in the slot with Rico Payton backing up those guys. After the Falcons did punt it the second time, the Saints were able to drive downfield and score and they actually would not end up punting in the entire first half. I thought in the first half, the offense did some really nice things. The play calling was good. Given their wide receivers and weapons and who their quarterback is, I thought they did a good job running the football and basically not relying too much on the receivers, but also allowing them to make plays. They found a way to make it work with Marquis Valdez Scandling and Kevin Austin Jr. at wide receiver one. And shout out to those two guys. Kevin Austin Jr. had some pretty nice catches in his first game for the New Orleans Saints. Had a really nice pass that was thrown behind him, but he ended up making a nice snag. And he also had a really nice play over the middle. And how about Marquez Vadla Scandling catching three passes for 109 yards and two touchdowns in the first half. I did not see this coming. I did not think he was going to do anything. Didn't do anything last week with Derek Carr at quarterback. But this week, he just decided to pop off and have a Rashid Shaheed type stat line. I mean, look at this play right here. This is an excellent throw from Derek Carr. Steps up in the pocket. Finally, steps up in the pocket. Triple cover. This is a crazy throw. The fact that this is a touchdown is crazy. Excellent from Carr. We've given a lot of criticism on this channel. But man, this is a great throw from Derek Carr. Shout out to Scantling getting that separation and uh, making the play. Then we also had him... Um, Right here, another huge play. Carr steps up in the pocket again, and there he is. Makes another big play. I thought he, I thought he dropped the ball right here. I was like, oh my gosh, did he just fumble? I didn't know he stepped out. I was like, oh my god, he, he fumbled the play. Ended up, he stepped out of bounds, and then what was it? The next play, two plays later, 
Carr found Scantling. Good job from him with the inside release. And Carr put it on him for a nice touchdown. And a huge reason why Derek Carr was able to have himself a really good game or a better game than he did last week was because of the offensive line play. I thought overall the offensive line did more good than bad. They gave him time. There was obviously some bad moments and some bad plays. But I think them being able to give Derek Carr, what, a 6 out of 10, a 7 out of 10 performance from the offensive line allowed Derek Carr to play better than he usually does. And speaking of Derek Carr, he had a good game. Looked really bad last week, threw a hospital ball, a literal hospital ball to start young wide receiver Chris Olave. Had a really bad game, looked rusty, did not look like a guy who should have been playing. And then today came out, made some nice throws, was obviously limited to what he could and couldn't do given the wide receiver room. He also didn't really have too many targets to the tight ends. But I thought given the situation, he had a pretty nice game, made some nice throws, especially that Marquis Badless Scanling first touchdown. But I do find it freaking hilarious that of course when the Saints are in position to get a top three pick, Derek Carr has the best game he's had since week two. Isn't that just freaking funny? Like the second the Saints are in position to get a, a top player in the draft, Derek Carr decides to have a good game. But in this situation, it's okay. We needed to we needed to win seven straight losses. He was a part of four of those seven losses. It was versus our rivals, just fired Dennis Allen. Darren Rizzi needed a win. This is this was the exception. Typically I'd be pissed off that the Saints won because they need a better draft pick. But given that this is the rivals too, it was nice to get a win. Oh, Derek Carr did have mostly good plays. He did have some bad moments. Like this throwaway, this play resulted in intentional grounding when all Derek Carr could have done was thrown it to the wide open Alvin Kamara. And that penalty was huge because the Saints would end up punting the ball back to the Falcons late in the fourth quarter, giving them yet another opportunity to march downfield and win the game. So this intentional grounding penalty from Derek Carr was very costly, could have costed the Saints the game, but luckily the Saints defense pulled through and this wasn't one of the moments where we were like, where we look back and we're like, damn, he missed Alvin right here. And instead, they ended up losing 10 yards and a down. I'll tell you what, though, what Derek Carr did today was good on the field. But the thing that pissed me off and a lot of people off was what he did post game. Only Derek Carr could turn a win versus a rival, have everyone happy. Only he could piss off the fans. Post game in an interview, he said, Our city deserves a winner. Shout out to Dennis Allen because he helped us build this. Excuse me? Shout out to who? Who helped build what? Build what? We're three and seven. He helped build you guys to a third win and you're in November. Shout out to the guy who was the main reason you guys were losing? Man, I did not want to talk crap about Derek Carr today, but this, this pisses me off. Shout out to Dennis Allen. If this doesn't happen, I'm talking so much more positively about him and the game he had. But how are you going to shout out the guy who played a huge role as to why you lost seven games in a row? Moving past that because I don't want to keep going, I'll go on a rant. But the running game had a pretty nice day. They didn't have 100 yards, but they did good enough to take the weight off of Derek Carr's hands. So the team didn't have to rely on him, which is good because you typically do not want to rely on Derek Carr in these situations. I mean, look at this throw to Juwan Johnson he had at the end of the game. The Saints needed a first down and he sailed the ball out of bounds. So the Saints being able to run the ball somewhat effectively was really nice because then the Saints didn't have to rely on Derek Carr to be the savior. Now a guy who had a good day except for one moment was Alvin Kamara. He broke the Saints all time rushing yards record. He now leads the Saints all time franchise in rushing yards. He only did it in eight seasons. Truly the best running back in franchise history. He's great. He was named a team captain this week by Darren Rizzi. And it's pretty weird to think that um, the second Dennis Allen is fired, Alvin Kamara is named a team captain. And I don't think the players were an issue. It's player voted. And I don't think the players didn't vote. And I don't think the players did not vote for Alvin. Maybe Dennis Allen had a say and didn't want a team captain calling him out on his bullcrap every time something bad happened. Alvin Kamara had yet another game of over 100 yards and just continues to prove that he is not washed. He's still the same old Alvin. Now, if we're going to talk about Alvin Kamara having a good day, we got to mention the bad moment he had right here. Wide open, would have sealed the game, had a touchdown 
Oh, that is brutal, man. I was speechless on the live stream. Has it, man? He just drops it. It's right in the money. It was a good throw. Would have sealed the game. This can't happen. Alva Kamara is better than this. He knows it. He was wide open given the situation. This cannot happen. Alva Kamara also knew it. He said post game the very first thing he said was that drop pass was the lamest thing he's ever done on a football field. He knew it. He owned up to it. And luckily the Saints were able to pull off the win despite the drop. And honestly, it felt like the Saints were not going to be able to pull off the win after Kamara dropped it. It was like, oh my gosh, Saints aren't going to close out a game yet again. They failed to close out games the last two and a half years. Same old story. I've seen this before. And it wasn't just us Saints fans. You had Tyron Matthew, one of the team's leaders, post game saying, if this happened three or four weeks ago, we would not have gotten that last stop after the game. Basically admitting that Dennis Allen being the coach played a huge role as to why the team was not able to close out and finish these games and pull off these wins. But ultimately, the Saints defense was able to get a stop on that last drive. And a huge thanks to Chase Young on this play with a huge strip sack setting the Falcons back a lot of yards and, and forced them to use their last timeout. Chase Young had a good play. I also thought Peyton Turner had a pretty nice game. An overall good game. Maybe the best of his career. I thought Ugo Amadi had a nice game. Will Harris, Pete Warner, Demario Davis. The overall, those are the guys that stood out the most to me. But some guys who struggled obviously were Alante Taylor in the secondary. Alante Taylor had three penalties. He gave up some big plays downfield. He didn't have a good game in his first start as an outside corner without Marshawn Lattimore on the roster. Shamar Jean Charles had a rough game in the secondary. Tyron Matthew had some missed tackles. And especially on this play right here, where Bijan Robinson cuts through and missed tackles. Tyron Matthew had the angle, just could not make the tackle, and Bijan Robinson ended up scoring. I thought overall the secondary had a rough game, but Tyron Matthew at the end, when he came through with an interception, I thought he made up for that missed tackle at the end with that game clutching interception but overall though both sides for the saints all three phases actually offense defense special teams played with more energy and juice and swag and a lot of that had to do with darren rizzi you could see him on the sideline interacting with players being excited making funny faces being pissed off the guy you could see his emotions on his sleeves it was nice to see a coach that seemed like he cared not saying da didn't care but man, does it seem like Darren Rizzi cares a whole lot more. It's crazy how big of a difference a single week can make. Fans were happy. They were loud. They were in the stadium. It wasn't fully packed, but they were loud. And Darren Rizzi said that they're going to get the dome back to what it used to be. And I hope they do, man. The Superdome is a special place that has been gypped out of special moments and being the dome over the last few seasons. I also like too that Darren Rizzi held his guys more accountable. I didn't notice as many pre-snap penalties or delay of games, 12 men in the huddle. His guys were being held accountable. I didn't notice too many egregious penalties. And something I found awesome, Peyton Turner was on the sideline celebrating with 30 seconds left and Darren Rizzi said he ripped his ass for celebrating too early and I like that hold him accountable and then turner tried to get back at him at the end of the game and accidentally hit him and darren rizzi said he got a stinger his left arm went numb for a second caught him off guard he looked hurt but he said he's 100 fine and healthy this was a very much needed win for the city the players the building it's been almost two months seven weeks this was very much needed they had game balls and darren rizzi said they gave the game ball to the building which is awesome to see not one player not one guy Derek Carr said that he gave Rizzi a game ball, but ultimately the head coach gave the game ball to the overall building and everyone in it. Let me know what you make of this game. Should the Saints continue to be winning games or should they move forward now thinking about that top pick in the draft? Let me know what you think the Saints should do as they currently have the number eight overall pick in the draft after today's win. Regardless though, it was nice to get a win. And shout out to Darren Rizzi. I'm happy for him. He got his first win as a head coach subscribe to my channel cash sports for more daily nfl content saints content all that good stuff have a good one and have a good start to your week peace